Is the Provo real estate market crashing? Guys, things are not looking very good. If you look back at the last couple of months, we've seen prices absolutely get devastated in the Provo, Utah market and the surrounding cities. In this video, we're gonna be discussing a little bit about what's happening in these markets, as well as what you need to know if you're a seller in these markets, or even if you're looking at purchasing a home anywhere in Provo or the surrounding areas. Now, for the sake of this video, we're gonna be looking at the entire county of Utah County, which is going to cover uh, you know, Provo as the main metropolitan area, as well as up north into Lehigh, in Saratoga Springs, Eagle Mountain, but then also south down into Spanish Fork area, Mapleton, Springville. This is gonna give us a good overview of what we're looking at from the county as a whole because the prices for these different cities is gonna move very uh, parallel to each other, right? They're gonna have a lot of correlation between the two. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and jump in my computer here, talk a little bit about what's happening with the data and also give you some examples along the way of what we're seeing as a real estate agent here in the market, you know, with boots on the ground. My team and I help people relocate here from all across the world, as well as a ton of local people as well at buying and selling real estate. So if you're looking at purchasing or selling real estate here in Utah, I wanna be your trusted real estate resource when it comes to doing that. So please reach out to me, call, text, or email anytime. I would absolutely love to hear from you. And with that said, let's go ahead and jump into my computer. So let's take a look at this data here that we're looking at. So for the month of January, we've now closed out this month. So we have a full month of data that we can actually work with. Again, this is for the county of Utah, which covers up the Provo metropolitan area. So we had 450 homes sales in this month, which is down drastically from what we saw during the summer months. So if we go back here to, uh, you know, the summer months of 2022, we're sitting at just under a thousand sales per month. Right now in January, we're only at 450. Now, some of this is due to the rising interest rates that we've seen, but a large portion of it is also due to uh, the seasonality that we see, right? Because anybody who was purchasing a home here in January, 2023, anybody who closed on a home then actually put that home and was shopping for that home. They put that home under contract in December of 2022, which is right in that holiday season. So we always expect January to be the slowest month. Let's actually go ahead and take a look at some of the past months. Uh, you can see here this big drop from in 2021 into 2022. We saw a huge drop. We were at almost a thousand here and dropped down to 653. And then February is much the same before picking back up in spring. So a lot of this is just seasonality based, but there is also some interest rate uh, fears that is causing the market to slow down, right? If we compare this 653 to 450, I mean, that's a huge drop. That's almost 200 home sales of a difference there, uh, which is going to be, I don't know, somewhere between 30 and 40% less, um, <clears throat> you know, year over year. If we go back to 2020 uh, and 2020, 2021, you know, right here, you can see that we dropped from 923 to 592. And even going back a little bit further pre COVID, we were at 851, we dropped to 563. So this is pretty typical to see. Now, the thing that's really important to look at is these two uh, numbers right here. Uh, this is going to be your original listing price. And then the second column is going to be your uh, median sales price for homes that sold in January. So you actually can see a significant drop in both of these numbers. Homes were getting listed for much less here in January. People finally realized the sellers finally realized, hey, home prices are dropping. We need to get a little bit more realistic if we actually expect to sell these homes. And even on top of that, they're still getting negotiated down to much lower numbers. We actually saw the median sales price drop from 500,000 in December all the way to 463. If we come back here and take a look uh, at the peak, we actually hit the peak in Utah County in April of 2022. We we're at 550 and now prices are down to roughly 463. So what is that? That's like a um, almost a 20% drop actually in prices. That's probably about 17% um, of a drop from the all-time highs that we saw back in April. So prices have definitely come down. I actually expect this to rebound a little bit going into February. We will see once the month finally closes out what's gonna happen, but I actually expect this to rebound based exclusively just on the seasonality that we always see here in January. I think that the drop that we saw going from December to January was more significant than we would normally see, but because of the way that the market is reacting, we're starting to see more showings. We're starting to see more homes come on the market. We're starting to see more homes going under contract, which means that there's still a lot of buyer demand sitting on the sidelines waiting to jump in. And therefore, I think prices will actually rebound. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this February number that for the median sales price to be somewhere in the 465 to 485 range once it's all said and done. Right now it's showing 499, but we don't have a full month worth of data. So this isn't a great data set. Now, the other thing that's important here to look at is the percentage here. This says that homes sold for on a median basis 
93% uh, compared to the original listing price, right? So that's basically just this number divided by uh, this number here, the 463 out of 500, and that gives you the 93%. And we've seen this continue to drop month over month uh, since April, right? I mean, even going back here to March, uh, which we hit our all time high at 105, we were at 105 here, and then we came down 104, 101, 97, 98, and it's just been continually dropping down to 93%. So this is actually a pretty substantial drop. You're also seeing days on market continue to increase. That's this last column right here. It's steadily been going up, but we're actually still in a pretty healthy range. You know, most economists will say, hey, somewhere between two to three months for days on market is actually pretty healthy, right? If you're less than that, that means you price the home too low. If you're more than that, you're priced too high. That's kind of just the general consensus. Now, there's a lot of variables with that. It really kind of depends on the home and the area. Uh, so that's not, you know, you can't just take that for uh, everything that's worth. You kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. But that being said, that's what we're kind of seeing with days on market. Now, if you're actually enjoying this content, guys, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You can click that button down below and make sure to check out our weekly newsletter. You can find a link to that to sign up in our description box down below as well. We'd love to see you over there. We send out information about what you need to know when it comes to living here in Salt Lake. We're going to give you real estate updates there, but also give you information about the market. We've actually been putting out a lot of really good information that I think you'd really enjoy. So please consider checking that out. All right. Now jumping back into this, I actually want to give you a couple of examples of what we're seeing in the market right now. The last couple of transactions that I've done in Utah County over the past month or so, we've actually continued to negotiate down off of the listing price. We just put a home under contract the other day that we got a $10,000 price reduction plus a massive credit and lease back for this particular buyer. This is the type of negotiation that we like to do. Right now, I'm advising buyers to be incredibly aggressive in their offers because you never know. Sometimes you just catch a seller at the right moment when they're a little bit desperate to get their home sold and you can actually get a really good offer accepted because because the sellers are just like, hey, we're done with this. Let's just get this home sold and move on, right? And the one prior to that that we did about 10 days ago, we actually negotiated about a $15,000 price drop as well as a $30,000 credit for this particular buyer. So we actually saw a massive credit uh, for this buyer and this is on a brand new home. So this is something that's gonna be very beneficial for these guys going into the future. So with that being said, I think there's a lot of opportunity out there if you're a buyer in this market. I'm actually expecting things to kind of rebound as we go back into the spring, at least you know, we've seen prices coming down. We've seen things going like this. I think they could flatline or maybe even have a little bump up as we go into the spring and summer market. So if you're considering purchasing a home, nobody knows for sure, but I'm kind of thinking, hey, now might be the time, right? Before we lose that winter seasonality, now might be the time to jump in. Interest rates, you know, personally, I think interest rates are going to stay pretty flat from where they're at right now, at least for the next six to 12 months. So you're not really going to gain any advantage waiting there. But I think there could be a good advantage now to purchase something where the market is a little bit softer and sellers are starting to sit on the market longer with their homes and they're getting a little bit more desperate. That being said, if you're a seller, I would actually possibly wait until March or April as we get into that spring rush to actually list your home and sell it. I think that's probably going to be an opportune time. If you have to sell it now, of course, you can still do so. We'll still try to negotiate the highest price for you. But if you have the ability to wait, I'd probably actually wait until the spring or maybe even summer months to get a little bit more favorable of a market. Um, and that also depends on if you're going to be buying a home yourself or if you're moving out of state, you're going to be renting. There's a lot of factors that go into that. But if you're considering selling a home and then purchasing one, I would actually probably say going into that in the spring is going to be the best bet because if you can maximize what you get for your home, even if you have to pay a little bit more on the next home, you can still leverage that a little bit and be able to get a pretty good deal on the purchase as long as you're a little bit savvy. And that's something that we can help you with as well. So with that said, if you guys are thinking about buying or selling real estate here in Utah, my team and I would love to help you help people from all across the world relocate here as well as hundreds of locals do the exact same thing. So whether you want to buy or sell, please reach out to me. My information is here on the screen. Call, text, or email anytime. I cannot wait to hear from you. And with that said, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.